Take a look at this clip and see if you can tell what sound I'm making. Ba, 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 ba. Now do the same with this clip. Ba, 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 ba. If you're like most people, in the first clip you would have heard me saying ba, 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 and in the second one you would have heard me saying fa, fa, fa. But what if I told you that I was actually saying ba, ba, ba both times? Take another look. Ba, 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 ba. This is a phenomenon known as the McGurk effect, and it's an example of our human ability to recognize patterns. Humans are wired to see patterns in a range of things, whether it's the repeating themes in a piece of classical music or the shapes of animals in clouds. It's an ability that's brought countless benefits, but like many of the quirks of our fascinating brains, it can also cause a lot of problems. Hi everyone and welcome, my name is Luke and this is The Science Lens, where I show you how science can improve your critical thinking skills. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about pattern recognition. Before I dive into the benefits and pitfalls of pattern recognition, I want to take a moment to clarify what I mean by pattern. Because when you think of that word, you might imagine a series of repeating shapes, like you might see printed on clothes or arranged on a tile floor, and not something like the McGurk effect. But for the purposes of this video, we need to expand our definition a little bit. Because patterns don't just exist in shapes, they can also exist in sounds, such as the beat of a drum in a piece of music. You can see patterns of behavior when people consistently act in particular ways. And memes are patterns because they're ideas that repeat in slightly different ways. So patterns are just shapes, sounds, events or thoughts that repeat, even if they change a little bit each time. The McGurk effect is an example of pattern recognition because throughout our lives, whenever we've seen a person's teeth and bottom lip come together, they've been making a f sound. So even though the actual sound is a ba, we hear it as fa because that's the pattern we're used to. Let me demonstrate further with another example. If I show you this image, you'll instantly recognize it as a human face. Now, you might not realize it, but what you're actually doing is recognizing a pattern. You see, most times when you see this kind of arrangement of dots and lines, it's because you're looking at a face. So you recognize them as a person. Same with this, this, and this. Since not all faces are the same, our brains need to be able to take the most basic pattern of eyes, a nose, and a mouth and see it as a face. Now, this flexibility is both a great strength and a great weakness of our pattern recognition ability, because while it allows us to see different individuals, it also makes us see faces in things like this, this, or even this. Now, you might be thinking, big deal, Luke. Who cares if sometimes I see a face in a cloud or an electrical outlet? But the consequences of our pattern recognition abilities can actually be quite damaging. So what are some of the ways that our pattern recognition can go wrong? Well, firstly, by making us see patterns that don't exist. Our drive to see patterns is so strong that it often leads us to see patterns in random noise that don't actually exist. I saw a good example of this the other day when I walked past a TV that was playing a show called Ghost Adventures. In this episode, a family was trying to communicate with a dead relative, and they asked a series of questions and then listened back to the audio recording. Now, before I show you the clip, let me play the sounds that they recorded. Sounds like random noise, right? Well, here is the rest of the clip. I'm next to Bobby. I'm next to Bobby. I'm next to Bobby. Yeah. That's what I just said. Really? Yeah. yeah. A spirit is telling us that it is standing right next to Bobby. And I will remind you, this spirit voice was captured only moments ago during complete silence. Is there any family members here? The family heard a pattern that they identified as a voice saying, I'm next to Bobby, when in reality the sound on the recording was just random noise. Now, it's possible that after you heard the family's interpretation of that sound, you were also able to hear a voice saying, I'm next to Bobby. This is an example of something called priming. It's when we see or hear a pattern because we've been led to believe that it's there. It's a particularly worrying aspect of our pattern recognition abilities because it means that it's not just our own brains that can deceive us, but possibly another person as well. 
when we twist new information to fit familiar patterns. An example of this is learning a new language. When we learn a new language, we tend to want to pronounce words using the sounds of our native language, which is a pattern that we know. This is why people tend to have accents when speaking a second language. Now, I actually ran into a problem like this in one of my Spanish lessons recently. My teacher asked me to say the word años, which means years, but I tried to fit the word into the pattern of English pronunciation and said anos, which means, well, something else. Our ability to recognize patterns in written language is actually a really good thing. For instance, it allows us to recognize that this, 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 and this mean the same thing. But we need to recognize the times when fitting new information into old patterns is okay, and the times when we need to break our old patterns of thinking. Three, we can become overly focused on the wrong pattern. To explain this, I'd like to use an example from the TV show, The Office. In this episode, Dunder Mifflin is hosting a casino night, and the character Dwight is playing poker against his workmates, including his nemesis, Jim. That's the normal question. I expect to do very well tonight. I have an acute ability to read people. Jim, for instance, has a huge tell. When he gets a good hand, he coughs. <coughs> uh, I will read. It's the weirdest thing. Every time I cough, he folds. In this clip, Dwight has become so focused on the idea that Jim has a tell that he doesn't consider the real pattern of behavior in front of him, which is that Jim is constantly playing pranks on him. It's very easy to become fixated on an idea once it takes hold in our brains, but as critical thinkers, we need to stay open to multiple possibilities at once. Finally, humans are not only driven to see patterns in the world, but we want to explain them. The problem is that our explanations for the patterns we see are often wrong. Now, sometimes when we come up with an explanation for a pattern that's wrong, it can be harmless, like believing that your favorite sports team keeps winning because you've worn your lucky jersey to every game. But sometimes people think they see patterns in world events and start to believe that they're being caused by an unseen force or group. This is one of the causes of conspiratorial thinking, which can be potentially very dangerous. So our pattern recognition is a powerful tool, but like all powerful tools, it can be dangerous when used incorrectly. So next, let's take a look at how we can make sure our own pattern recognition doesn't get out of control. Before I continue, I just have a small request that if you're enjoying the video so far, please click the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like it. Okay, continuing on. So how can we take a scientific approach to making sure our pattern recognition is helpful and not harmful? Well, as usual, the first thing we should do is to gather some objective data. Gathering cold hard facts is the best way to make sure our memories aren't playing tricks on us. Let me give you an example. I'm a teacher, and in my profession, there's a commonly held belief that we always get sick at the start of the school holidays. I've had this thought myself, and it seems to be true, but I can't say for sure whether or not this pattern actually exists because I haven't collected any data on it. To confirm this belief, I would need to not only gather data on myself, but a number of other teachers in different parts of the world. And I would need to check in with them at random times during the year to see if they were also getting sick outside of the school holidays. If I did this, it's likely I would find that teachers get sick all year round, and it's just that getting sick at the start of the holiday stands out in our minds because it's really annoying. Challenge your theories. When a good scientist comes up with a theory, they'll do everything they can to disprove it. Likewise, if they think they see a pattern in their data, they'll do everything they can to prove that there actually is no pattern. Looking for evidence that disproves your theories rather than looking for evidence that supports them is how you make sure that they're sound. This is part of what makes scientific information so reliable because the ideas that survive this process are the good ones. So if you think you recognize a pattern, rather than trying to prove that you're right, be like a scientist and try to prove yourself wrong. Finally, you should consider whether something might be influencing your pattern recognition, meaning has something primed you to see a particular pattern. This could be another person with good or bad intentions, or it could be your own biases. A lot of my videos on this channel are about cognitive biases and how they can affect our reasoning, so if you're interested, you should check those out. So our ability to recognize patterns is both a great strength and a potential hazard when used incorrectly. It can help us when learning a new language or lead us to believe in conspiracy theories. But by gathering data and remaining objective, we can ensure that the patterns we see are real and not just something we've been primed to see. Until next time, hasta manana, manana.
Well, that's it from me for today, but if you'd like some resources to help practice the concepts that I covered, I recommend that you check out my website at thesciencelens.com or my store on TPT. There I have a range of worksheets that help teach critical thinking in the science classroom. Also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And finally, I used a huge number of resources to help me put this video together and they're all linked in the description below. So if you'd like more information, I recommend that you check those out. For now though, that's it from me. Thanks for watching.